In this video today we're going to see if we can get this 1987 Spectrum 128K plus 2 running on AA batteries. So first of all we need to find out how much power it actually needs. And if we get the brick over here, this is the original one that came with it. It says at the back here, DC output 9 volts at 2.1 amps, which actually draws quite a lot of amps. Problem is, there's no indication on here whether the centre pin is positive or negative. So we're going to have to plug it in and measure that because otherwise we could put the wrong polarity into the spectrum. So we're going to turn on our multimeter and we're going to put it to DC voltage and we're going to put the negative to the outer probe and the positive to the inner probe and see what it reads. Right, so as you can see here it's reading negative 12 volts. I know it says 9 volts but often it will output more until you connect it up. There's no load on that at the moment. So in this instance here, it's actually center pin negative. So it's a good job we checked that. So now if I go center pin negative, you can see it's coming up as 12.5 volts. So basically we need nine volts. So we're gonna be wiring it up using six double A batteries. Now these are 1.5 volts each, but when they're new, they will output a little more. So we'll probably maybe get 10 or 11 volts from six of them. So let's get two of these ones here, and we need to wire these up in series, because then 1.5 add 1.5 will be three volts because they're in series. So let's wire them all up in series, six of them, and that should equal around about nine to 11 volts. And then if we haven't got enough amps, we're gonna have to wire another lot of packs on top of this in parallel to these. So we still have the same voltage, but hopefully we'll have more amps. Now looking at the plug here, it looks very similar to this one here. So we're gonna be using this one here, which has exposed wires at the end of it. So you can see they are now wired up in series here because I've connected the positive and the negative together and now we have positive and negative here. Now on this one the middle pin is the red one here and the outer pin is the black one so we're going to have to actually wire it up the wrong way round, black to red and red to black because we need the centre pin to be negative but we'll check it before we put it on. Ten point one volts, centre pin negative. Let's plug it in. What do you reckon? Do you reckon it's going to work, or will we need more amps behind it? And if it works, will it have enough power to actually power up the tape deck as well? Will we be able to play a game? And then if it does work, what glitches will happen? as the batteries start to wear down. Let's try to work all that out. I haven't done this before. So we have a red light. Okay, so we've got a red light here, but yet look, there's nothing happening on screen and I know this is tuned in. Right, let's try that one more time. Right, okay, so mustn't be enough amps there to power it. So let's double up on the batteries in parallel and see then whether that will work or not. Okay, so this is 12 batteries in total. Let's see what it's measuring now. Right, 9.9 .9 volts. Let's see if that is enough to power it. What do you think? Oh, yes, there we go. We've got it powered. Excellent. Should we try and load up again? So we have 12 batteries to power the 1987 Spectrum plus two, one, two, eight K. Hey, did you think it would take that? Yes. Oh, look at that. Ocean. Brilliant. Oh, there we go. I can stop that now.
playing absolutely fine. I'll just complete this screen and then uh, we'll go over to the power supply, see what glitches happen. There we have it. So yeah, you can see it's working absolutely perfectly. Right, okay, let's reset this now and get it set up with the bench power supply. So the reason I'm using the bench power supply is to save me unnecessarily wasting the batteries. It will mimic wearing down of the batteries as I lower down the voltage. And it will also let us know at what voltage things stop working, all weird stuff starts happening. Okay, so I've got my bench power supply set up there. You can see 9 volts and when I touch the leads together you can see 2.1 amps. So this is mimicking the proper Sinclair power supply. Now I have to remember that it is centre pin negative, so I'm going to be putting a negative lead on there. And I'm going to be putting this positive lead on the negative. And there we go, you can see it's come up. So first thing I'm going to do is, let's just see if it starts to fail when I'm just typing random things and I'll start to lower down the voltage. So you can see right now it's working fine. Then what we'll do is we'll then put the voltage back up and we'll load up the game and then we'll actually start to lower down the voltage while we're playing the game. So I'm going to start lowering it down now. I'm going to lower it down at 0.5 of a volt at a time. So we're now at 8.5 volts. So there's no change at 8.5 volts, there's no change at 8 volts, there's no change at 7.5 volts. Let's pick up the video when we go down to 7 volts. Every now and then I can see the screen shifting a bit. Right, we're down to 7 volts and it's still working. Wow, I thought we would have gone by now. I wonder would it still work 7 volts when we're actually playing the game. Let's drop it to 6.5. Is it getting more glitchy? Oh, there we go. It crashed. Oh no, still going. Look at that. Listen, listen. Listen to that. Wow. I wonder, can we still reset it? Yes, we can. But can you see it's gone fuzzy? Nineteen eighty two Amstrad. Right, okay. Interesting. Let's see if it will drop any more. I'm just gonna do it bit by bit now because it's about to go. There we go. At six point four volts it's gone. Let's see if we can reset it. No. Interesting. Okay. And let's put it up to uh 6.7 No, it's still not having it No, it's still not coming on so although we drop the voltage to that it won't actually turn on from that Let's see if it will turn on There we go, it turns on at 7 Interesting Right, okay Now I'm going to put the voltage up to 9 again and we're going to play the game and let's see what happens when we start to drop the voltage while the game's being played. Just going to rewind this. Right, as expected, it loaded up fine. So let's get into the game and let's see what's going to happen now. Right, so obviously I can move around. Now let's start to lower down the voltage. So we're going to go to 8.5. I presume that's going to work just fine. Yeah, and let me just get this guy. So 8.5 is working just fine, 8 is also working fine, 7.5 is working fine. Let's pick up the video when we go to 7 volts. So it's still fine and the sound as well is still okay. Interesting. Right, let's go down just 0.2 of a volt. Well, it's still fine at the moment. Right, let's go 0.2 of a volt. So we're now down to 6.6. 
Still fine. All right, let's try 6.5. Oh, here we go. Sound's gone weird. Yeah, there you go. You can hear it's definitely different. But it's still in colour. It hasn't changed to black or white or anything. And the speed's still there. So it's just a sound and it's gone a bit more fuzzy. Let's just go a tiny little bit more. Now, will it still work now like this? Oh, there we go. So we're losing. We're losing the signal. But it's still working. It's still working. You can see him down here uh, at the bottom here. And I can still hear it. Let's see if I can go to the next screen. Can't see. Oh, I've lost it. Come back. Yes, yeah, still goes to the next screen. Right, tiny bit more. There we go. 6.45 volts is where it cut out. Really, really interesting. And now if we put it back on, what? Oh wow, well, we're still on the game. When we put it back on, we're still here. Well, isn't that interesting? I thought maybe it would reset. So uh, what, what do we have to go down to where it won't come back to the game? So let's go down to six volts. Right, so we're now at 5.9. And now let's go back up. We're still on the game. Right, let's go down to 4.5. And now go back up. We lost the game. Interesting. But we haven't completely lost it. Let's go down more. To 4 volts. 3.8 volts. Now come back up. We're still there. So now I'm going to go right down to nothing. And now let's bring it back up. I wonder is that because it's got charge left in the capacitors? Well, would you look at that? Yeah, so the game's not there anymore, but yet it hasn't brought me back to the loading screen. You know, the home screen. I think it must be because there's charge left in the capacitors. I bet if we left it like that for a, a few minutes and turned it back on, then it would be back to the home screen. In fact, let's do that. Let's just leave it uh, until 3.29. Okay, it is now 3.29. Let's put the power back on and see what we go to. Wow, okay. That's interesting. So we've just gone to there. Reset it. And we're back to normal again. Right, I'm not quite sure why it holds on to that. I would have thought that if the power supply was completely dead, because we had no voltage coming out, I would have thought this would have been the same as unplugging this and plugging it back in. So I thought that was, uh, that was quite interesting. It seemed to retain some memory from beforehand. Not sure what's going on there. Maybe you can add it down to the comments down below. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed that one there. I thought that was really interesting, a lot more interesting than I thought it would be. So uh, if you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. I'm going to be doing this similar thing here on loads of different systems. I've got an Atari Jaguar that I might try next. So uh, yeah, if you enjoyed it, think about subscribing. Thanks for watching, everyone.